this is Michelle from Dr. Monica Tadros' office, and here today I have one of our patients, Teresa. She was diagnosed with Bell's palsy about 13 years ago, and she would like to share her story. Well, I when I was diagnosed with Bell's palsy, at first I had no idea what it was, but to make a long story short, after I saw a neurologist and went through um, all the procedures they usually take, it's very standard. Nobody really knows how to deal with Bell's palsy. With Bell's palsy. So I, um, I went through all the procedures and it took about a year and a half to get my face back. But during the course of the 13 years, I was never comfortable. My eyes, my right eye didn't close, my lips are crooked, um, and it, it's a disease that is often dismissed by neurologists that I've seen very, I've seen a lot. I've gone back to neurologists and asked them how can I avoid getting it back again. Um, it's very, very uncomfortable. And then as I was getting older, I noticed it was getting worse and worse. And um, so I did a lot of research and I found Dr. Um, Taros. And um, not only did I find that she was a plastic surgeon, but she specializes in all these neurologists um, that has to deal with Bell's palsy and she was willing to see me even after 13 years because I was suffering um, and um, I'm just absolutely amazed how comfortable she makes me feel I don't feel uh, that I'm walking in with a stigma that it has something to do with me other than just the disease I was really looking for somebody to help me with my disease and she just made me feel so good and so welcomed and the minute I called the office Michelle's voice was just softening and they really make you feel good and she's really helping me I finally found a doctor that's not dismissing me because I was dismissed for almost 13 years nobody takes this disease seriously and she does and it just makes me cry because I'm finally getting relief. There's a lot of pain with Bell's palsy, but when you don't see the paralysis anymore, it gets dismissed. Nobody knows how to handle it, and she specializes in it, and it's just a godsend. Okay, Raise your eyebrows for me. Good. Close your eyes tight. Good. Open. Smile for me. Good. Now relax, straight face, and blink. So you can see as she's blinking that she has facial synchinesis or twitching of the upper lip that's involuntary. So go ahead and blink for me again. Good. So that's what you're describing is that excessive pull in the cheek area. And so the more the eye tightens up, the more you're feeling that pull because the nerve is linked in that way. So last time we preliminarily dosed that because we don't want to excessively dose it and weaken the upper lip, but this time we'll be able to go for a stronger dose. Open your eyes and raise your eyebrows. Great. Relax. that area. And it's important to Botox both sides so that we can even out the face. Make sure that the muscle is as strong or as weak on a, in a symmetric fashion on each side. So now the eye is really in a spasm and it's a circular muscle. So we're going to soften that spasm, but you still need eye closure function, so we have to be careful with where and how we dose it. Close your eyes tight for me, really tight. Squeeze them. the other side so that it looks more symmetric. Now the actual aperture, the opening of your eye is much wider on this side. Here it's more constrictive. So we're using Botox here to soften it, but we're gonna balance out the crow's feet 
and the weight appears on the other side so that it doesn't alternate on us. Okay. Now let's look at the lift area. Okay, so blink for me again. Relax. And blink again. Relax. Blink again. Relax. You can actually feel right where the muscle is pulling. Smile for me. Good. So over here, the depressors are pulling down on the corner of the mouth, so we want to even that out. And pucker for me. Good. And we can start to see the differences in the muscles on either side. excursion of the smile right here in the rosorius muscle. I want to weaken that a little. And your chin down. Go ahead. Clench your teeth for me. So connected to this muscle are the platysma bands down here. And weakening those in the neck will decrease the spasm indirectly. So we've balanced out and treated the forehead. We've opened up the eye with Botox here and just smoothed it out on the normal side. We've addressed the synkinesis at the mid face. The wide excursion, balancing that out on the other side and treating the dimpling that happens in the chin in a little more asymmetric fashion and turning up the corner of this mouth a little bit so that it matches the regular side and relieving the tension from the neck on that side. And that should be the next phase of facial balancing and correction of the paralysis. Okay, so Teresa, how did you find Dr. Tadros? Well, um, as the years are going by, I've, I started to realize there has to be somebody out there. I didn't want to give up because I, my face was becoming very uncomfortable, so I went on the web and I searched and I searched. I typed in neurologist, Bell's Palsy, New Jersey. I did all of that. Her website came up and I read what she wrote on it and I saw it was very, it was more than what she could do. It was also, she seemed to be, um, the way she wrote it, she was in touch with what we go through and she said that she takes the entire skeleton face, you know, and doesn't just throw out Botox in your face, she works with the structure of your face and I like that idea. So I. I said, this is definitely going to be it. Yes. And that's how I still got her on the web. Um, another question that I have is, what does Dr. Tadros do differently that other doctors yes. didn't do? Well, that's an easy question. She doesn't dismiss me as Bell's palsy being a disease that can't be that can't be fixed. You just have to get through it. And it just doesn't make sense to me. There's got to be something that we can do to help it because um, it's just unfair. Everybody was very passive with me. What she did was she welcomes me. She discussed um, the very active procedures for me. Um, and she didn't just say, all right, come in one day, let's do this and you'll be fine. She's going to see me for a while and she's going to keep going and make me feel comfortable and work with my facial structure. I mean, it's not, it, she, she knows how I feel both as a woman, that this is uncomfortable and she's also very advanced in everything that she's working with. So it was just a win-win for me. If you had one recommendation to give other patients who suffer from Bell's palsy, what would you say to them? I don't listen to the neurologist. Don't accept passive remarks. Don't accept um, the stigma out there about Bell's palsy is strictly uh, it, that it becomes um, 
just something vain that you want to take care of because it's not. It is very difficult to live with. There's a lot of things we have to do, like always have a tissue in our hand because you're going to drool or your eyes going to tear. Um, and to see Dr. Chargers because she was the first one who realized that it really is a concern to live like this, especially you know when you go to work and you're working with people and you're talking all the time. It could be very embarrassing. Nobody knows what's really going on under the skin. The only person who really knows what those pills is like is the person who's suffering from it. But she's in tune to that, and it's just great.